So what I want to do, you can use this slide as a reference, but I'm going to move to the animated slide so we can kind of do things in a, in a more linear fashion. Okay, same schematic. Uh, blood vessel to the left, tissue to the right. And what's going to happen is during normal uh, blood flow, you're going to have your white and red cells moving through that vasculature very nicely. Okay, now what happens when we get tissue damage? Okay, let's say we get a cut in the skin. Inevitably, that introduces bacteria into the tissue. And again, as you're looking at your diagram, you can see lots of things that are going on. I'm going to focus on initially what happens with the macrophage. So in this case, you've got macrophages that are in that tissue. They're going to be able to recognize the bacteria, be activated by phagocytosing that bacteria, and begin to start making some cytokines. Now, in, uh, in the attempt to not make this slide as busy as the one before it, I don't have everything listed here, but once this macrophage activates, it's going to start making cytokines. And I put two up here because, uh, just to remind me, number one, interleukin-8 being the most important chemotactic cytokine, okay? There are other cytokines listed, including IL-1, IL-6, and TNF-alpha. And those three cytokines, IL-1, IL-6, and TNF-alpha, are your pro-inflammatory cytokines, all right? And what those cytokines are going to do is they're going to act systemically. They're going to act on the hypothalamus to increase the set point for temperature. So you're going to get a temperature. You're going to get a fever. They're going to act on the bone marrow to increase the production of white cells. They're going to act on the liver to increase the production of acute phase proteins. You're going to get CRP, complement reactive protein. We know that's an indicator for inflammation. We use that sometimes to look for inflammatory disease like heart attacks, for example. Okay. Also from the liver, you'll have complement proteins being made. And those are some of the systemic effects of these pro-inflammatory cytokines. Okay. So I didn't list them all. You have kind of an idea of what those cytokines are going to do. Interleukin-8 is one of your major chemoattractive cytokines. And what it's going to do is it is going to act on the vascular endothelium to make it a little bit sticky. So you see those nice little yellow cell adhesion markers start to pop up there. Now the white cells that are moving through have complementary adhesion markers. So again, they start to bind loosely and eventually very tightly to the vascular endothelium and eventually they're going to be able to squeak through, okay? So what you've just done in this instance is you've recruited a neutrophil from the blood into the tissue to help you clean up this infection, okay? Now, additionally, what's going to be happening is you're going to get some complement activation. And we mentioned another molecule that was in that complement cascade that was important for chemotaxis, and it was C5A. C5A is going to also help recruit cells from the blood into the tissue. So we're again going to be drawing cells that are passing through, trying to get them into the tissue again to help us clean up the bacteria, um, eventually help us repair any tissue damage that was done. Okay, and now you also have mast cells within the skin. Now you can see one down here. And the C5A protein as well as the C3A that are both complement proteins act as what we call anaphylatoxins, okay? C5A and C3A can cause degranulation of mast cells without IgE, okay? And when you get degranulation, what are you going to get? Well, initially, of course, you're going to get histamine, followed by your prostaglandins and leukotrienes, all right? Histamines, prostaglandins, leukotrienes, we're increasing vasodilation, increasing vascular permeability. We're promoting 
an inflammatory response. And additionally, we know leukotriene B4, of course, is also a chemo-attractive molecule. So what are we doing? We're recruiting more cells from the blood into the tissue. Macrophages and neutrophils can also make leukotrienes, which again are recruiting more cells from the blood into the tissue. So what this acute inflammatory process does is work to take these white cells from the blood. Remember, neutrophils are always gonna be the first to arrive, followed by monocytes and macrophages. Okay, so monocytes next. They're gonna come in, they're gonna clean up that infection. The neutrophils are gonna die off. You may have a little bit of pus there. And when everything is all repaired, the bacteria is all gone, those cells that didn't die are gonna be able to leave, okay? That is the process of acute inflammation. So if you understand that, and then the more specific process of extravasation that we talked about just a, f a few slides earlier, uh, you're gonna crush any of the questions on inflammation, okay? They like to ask inflammation questions. It's an important part of any infection, um, whether it be, you know, pneumonia, whether it be some kind of soft tissue infection, uh, chronic inflammation, those are all really important concepts. So really high yield stuff when we're dealing with uh, the inflammatory process.